Here is the lore of every main boss in Shadow of the Earth Tree, and like the base game, it is all interconnected. I mean, Bale injured Placido Sax, Moog is somehow a victim, and the Mother of Fingers reveals a twist that actually was said to us when the game first came out. Except, we need to go back at the start, and let's talk about the main villain. Mesmer is the son of Merica and elder brother to possibly Melina. He was cursed from birth, a malevolent snake writhed within him. It is called the Abyssal Serpent, and it ate away at the kindling inside him. After Merica found out about the curse, she plucked out his right eye and placed a seal of grace to seal away the serpent. Yet, this wasn't enough to end her fear, so she sent him on a crusade to never return. The Shadow Realm is inhabited by the Horn Sent, people who fittingly have horns. This race murdered Merica's entire bloodline, stuffing them into jars believing sainthood would await. So she took revenge. Killing two birds with one stone, she sent her son to purge the realm of all horn scent, and then would swiftly abandon him there. At Mesmer's side during the purge were a list of those shunned away. Commander Gaius led his army and was an Albanuric, which was a curse of its own, and each knight hailed from renowned families but were chased away from their homes after pledging allegiance to Mesmer. Alongside that, he also had help from Rolana. During this crusade, he killed all sorts of horn scent, impaling them among his spears. When we encounter Mesmer, he is in utter disbelief that his mother would abandon him. And in an act of final desperation, he plucked out his eye and therefore the seal holding back the abyssal serpent. This showed his true curse. In his final moments, he calls upon his mother one last time, ending one of the more sympathetic characters in the entire game. And of course, if you are enjoying this video, subscribing does just genuinely help out a lot. And I am nearing 100k, which is a goal I would just love to reach. So, thanks in advance. And now, let's talk about the Dancing Lion. Horned warriors are chosen to become Divine Beast Warriors based on their skill in combat. Among them, those who excel in Divine Invocation are selected to become Sculpted Keepers. From this role, they wear the lion costume and have the high honor to perform the Ritual of the Lion Dance. If you look under its cloak, we're shown that this boss is just two guys in a costume. And closer inspection displays the main dancer using one hand to control the mouth and the other to adjust the head. These sculpted keepers are messengers of the heavens, and the act of divine invocation, which is calling upon a divine or spiritual force, is likely done through their lion dance. This divine invocation is also what gives them their power. Although, like many of these bosses, they suffered from Mesmer's Crusade. From horn scent descent, they are pretty much the prime targets, and the majority of them were impaled and burned at the flame, which we can see during the story trailer. This purge caused their graceful dance to now be used as their form of attack, and is also why good old grandma over here wants you to get revenge on Mesmer. Another victim of Mesmer is Romina. She is the saint of a church deep within the ancient ruins of Rall. Their symbol was a bud. But after Mesmer's crusade, it was all burned to the ground, leaving her as the sole victim. We can actually see her in the story trailer grasping at the bud, which later becomes her weapon. With nothing left, she discovered a twisted divine element that she weaved into the Scarlet Rot. We can likely assume that this is what transformed her and started the whole Rot religion we see throughout the world. After this, the buds were tainted with Rot. Worst of all, she's what caused the spiders to swell in size. Romina also adopted all sorts of creatures. She brought in the deserted pests as servants, and embraced the scarlet butterflies who were abandoned from millennia. Now, let's look at the next boss. Rolana, Twin Moon Knight, is the sister to Renala, and was a Carrion princess. Sometime during her youth, she was taught by Count Emir about sorcery, except he quickly abandoned any allegiance to the moon, as it was simply just the closest magic to the celestial bodies, which we'll definitely get to later. Eventually, Carrion Princess Rolana gave up her title to chase after Mesmer. Before departing, Renala gave her younger sister the gift of lustrous black hair. After participating fiercely in the crusade, she was at Mesmer's side and quickly became known as the Sword of Mesmer. She alone was able to combine the power of the moon and flame, which we see on her weapon. Another figure in Mesmer's army is Commander Gaius. He is the leader of Mesmer's men during the Purge of the Shadow Realm. He actually comes from an Albaneric background, meaning he's related to these guys, which is a human-made life form that resulted in a birth defect leaving his legs paralyzed. Because of this, he rides atop a boar, which he calls his other half. While growing up, Gaius' gravitational magic was taught by the same Alabaster Lord who mentored Radon, leading Gaius and Radon to become rivals in their youth. And this competition led to them having similar attacks, which we can see both of them use. 
With him being an Albaneric, and therefore considered cursed from birth, he found common ground with Mesmer, who suffers from the Abyssal Serpent. And this similarity allowed them to become friends, and therefore the leader of his army. Now, the Putrescent Knight is a very mysterious boss, and to know more, we need to go back. In an age long before the Ur Tree, people would burn the bodies of individuals, which produced this ghost flame. Although from those flames, it created vengeful spirits and tainted the flesh of them. A specific clump of this tainted flesh was quite lucky, as it sapped down from one or multiple of the coffins in this area. This tainted flesh, possibly directed by the vengeful spirits, drank from St. Trina's nectar. This single act alone granted it eternal rest, and from there on out, it decided to be St. Trina's Knight, protecting it from any intruders. Metzer is the mother of all two fingers, and yes, the finger creepers. Although this entity also is the daughter of the Greater Will, and the Greater Will is an outer god, a being far more powerful than any demigod, and has just vast influence over the entire world and maybe universe. For example, it sends a golden star to the lands between, which happened to be, you know, the Elden Beast. Except that beast wasn't there first, and Metter was the original shooting star sent by the Greater Will. She was able to receive signs from this outer god from beyond the microcosm. Except these signs stopped coming, and never again did she see them. She was broken and abandoned by the Greater Will. Regardless, she kept producing these two fingers trying to find a message that just didn't exist. And this is the whole twist of the series. Merica, really the main character of the game, was guided by these two fingers who she believed were communicating with the Greater Will. But they were just producing nonsense. That means everything that the Golden Order was based upon is just false. This is also the secret that Sir Gideon Ofnir learned that drove him to fight you, which he actually told us like a while ago. The two fingers lost their purpose a long, long time ago. Count Emir knew the roots of everything were just wrong, so he took it upon himself to become the new mother of fingers. He would try to take the role of receiving signs from the greater will, which as a result would quote unquote bring redemption to the world. Now how that went, well, you kill him. In a long time ago, Bale challenged Dragonlord Placidosax to a battle. The insane battle resulted in grievous injuries from both sides. Bale lost not just his leg, but his wings are torn apart. The right side is completely cut off, and the left shows his bones protruding out. For the Dragonlord, he's missing three of his five heads, and you really don't have to look far to find them. Two are currently stuck biting into his neck. After this, Bale retreated to the Shadow Realm. Because of this, dragons that are loyal to Placidosax started to hunt for Bale. Now, Bale and his descendants, called the Drakes, became sacrifices for those who wished to consume their heart that would give them powers. And it seems that there was even a judge of character among the dragon communion warriors. The dragon man actually would judge people to see if they were worthy to challenge Bale. Once he was slain, we got the option to eat his heart at the altar. Although, this one is different, and Bale's heart one day will consume the body and soul of whoever devours it. One of the more mysterious bosses in the game is the Shadow Tree Avatar, which mimics the twisted nature of the Shadow Tree. From what we know, the Earth Tree Avatars arose during the shattering of the Elden Ring, and had the purpose to protect the minor Earth Trees. Our sunflower over here is likely the same. We encounter it at the closest we ever get to the base of the Shadow Tree, so odds are it's trying to protect it. Although there is one key detail that separates it from the other avatars, and that's that it holds Mikola's rune. From what we know, runes can transform their holders, as we see with Morgoth. So by acquiring this, it's likely what elevated the Avatar to the next level. Midra was one of many others who tried to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame, but failed as he was too weak. For those who attempted, they would take the torment, despair, sin, and every curse of others and melt it all away. Before this, he was known as Sage Midra. This thick forest was his sanctum, and no horn scent dared to enter the area. He is the master of the house we found him in, and lived with his lady Nanaya. His servants deemed him the Great Midra, except it all took a turn when he decided to follow the dark path of becoming the Lord of Frenzied Flame. This power could melt away everything, even the immortal spirits, which hold a big place in the horn scent beliefs and culture. So they forbid it. But this act alone by Midra was a direct threat to them. They overran the mansion and tortured his servants. We can actually find their bodies outside the house. With the Sword of Damnation, they had an execution like no other. Using the weapon to pierce his body, the Golden Barbs inflicted eternal agony. 
except his lady Nanaya told him to endure. So he resisted the madness of the frenzied flame. We can actually see Nanaya clutching at an individual who failed to become a lord. What is left of their body is, is just a spine. Although once we encounter Midra, he could resist no longer and lets it overtake him. My theory is Midra was originally not strong enough to become the Lord of Frenzied Flame, but the endless time spent enduring the pain brought him to the level where for a short amount of time he could withstand the madness. And now, let's talk about the final boss. Mikola is an Empyrean who has the ability to charm others, manipulating them into doing what he desires. The goal of Mikola is to be reborn as a god. In preparation for this, he abandoned parts of his body all throughout the Shadow Realm. Most notably, his other self and loving part of his body, Saint Trina. We shortly learn that Trina desires for you to kill Mikola, stating that godhood would be a prison. Back at the Tower of Shadow, there is a divine gateway where Mikola intends to ascend to godhood. This is the same place where Merica ascended too. Although, to become a god, one needs a lord and a vessel for that lord's soul. Harnessing the ability of his charm, Mikola used Moog to enter the Shadow Realm. Although, it didn't stop there, and he needs a vessel. And that's where you come in, killing Moog! Swiftly, his body was stolen and brought to Mikola. Now all that was needed is a Lord's soul. In Mikola's childhood, he was impressed by Radon's strength, which contrasted him and his sister's cursed bodies. So he made a heartfelt wish for Radon to become his consort, meaning his spouse. Except Radon denied the offer. So Mikola came up with a plan to forcibly take Radon as his consort. He then sent Melania to kill him, and in this cutscene, we finally know what she says, uttering the words, Mikola awaits the O Promised Consort. Except, Radon was too strong, and this is once again where you come in, killing Radon. Mikola now puts Radon's soul into Moog's body, creating his consort, and that's also why you can see horns sprouting throughout him. Mikola wished to usher in the Age of Compassion, although instead we fulfill Saint Trina's wish and kill them both gaining the remembrance of a god and a lord. And that is the lore of every main boss. If you want more lore and more bosses, click this video right here. Thanks for watching. Alright, I'll see you.